was knocked forward. Gudrun saw the back of his head. It was glowing white, shining with moonlight. And for the very first time, the deacon spoke. The moon is high and death is nigh. Do you see this moonlit Christmas night? Here shineth my white, my skull, quite white. Gudrun, Gudrun, Gudrun. But before she could do anything, Faxi reached the other side and galloped up to the church. And the deacon helped her off the horse. Now she stood so scared she could not move in the churchyard. Well, the deacon went off to tend to Faxi. The moon came out again, fortuitously perhaps, illumining the land, flooding it with silver. And she saw the graveyard, with all the graves she knew so well. And then she started because there, right next to her, right next to the lich gate where the deacon had put her, there was a new grave. And as she read the name on the tombstone, and the grave was quite open. Just then, on her right hand, on her left hand side, there was a mighty tug, tug, tug on the sleeve she hadn't put. Uh, they hadn't put the arm in. And the deacon cried to her, Come join me! Join me, Gudrun! Join me in the grave! And Gudrun reached out with her right arm and hung the, held on to the only thing she could grab hold of. As chance would have it, the bell of the lich gate. And the bell rang wildly through the land and everybody heard its mad peal. And the deacon tugged Gudrun down towards the grave, and Gudrun hung on to the church bell with her mice and mane. Backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, she was tugged. Until suddenly, with a loud rip, the sleeve gave way. And the deacon tumbled down into the grave. And all the earth covered him. Now it was said from that moment on. Gudrun knew no peace, for the deacon would come as the sun set, and he would come to the eaves of the priest house and say, Come join me, join me Gudrun, join me in the grave. Gudrun would cower in her room, and not dare to go out. Well, the priest called on the bishop, and the bishop tried bell, book, and candle, but it was no good. But those days were not like these days. Followers of the old ways still dwelt up on high Snederfell. And the bishop was a wise man and a good man. And he summoned, sent for a famous magician. And the magician put a mighty boulder down one end of the house and then took his position in the eaves down by the door where the deacon always came. And as sure as sunset, there was the deacon. Join me! Join me! Join me in the grave! He called out. And out stepped the magician. And in a series of mighty incantations, he drove the ghost of the deacon down the wall of the house, right to the corner. And in the corner, in a final fiat, he had the great boulder move as if by magic, crushing the demon underneath. Gudrun at least heard no more of the deacon of dark. But men say he is still under that great stone. So I suppose the moral of this story is, if it's got a moral, if ever you find yourself in Iceland, be careful of the stones. Don't lift them because you never know what might be dwelling underneath. Thank you. That was the story.